Hi, I'm G. Troyer from ATTS and TST. Tonight, I'm here with the Launch Throttle 3, their new scan tool that is out, and we're going to diagnose this 2014 Fusion behind me. We're going to hit Auto Detect and look at the speed that it's going to go through. It's going to give us all the information. We're going to do a health report, not a system scan. That way, we can get all the information and actually email it. We hit diagnose, so you can see you have all the info right there. And it is going through to do this whole report. Tell us, are we on? That humming noise in the background, we have a maintainer on the vehicle. That way the battery won't go dead. And we won't have an issue with anything that is going to go on with this vehicle. We don't want the battery to go down when we're going through all the different modules in the car. So now I'm going to hit health report, and it will scan all these different systems. Right away, I see three DTCs in red, and notice up top, normal, green, abnormal, scanned, not scanned, not equipped. So it is going through the topography, and the to top topography here is pretty damn good, okay? So it is nice because the topography sticks out at you. And that is important. So now we're going through all the modules. Notice it also gave us the mileage on this car, 107,992. And it is almost done. And it's doing that in about a minute. That's pretty, pretty quick. And this would be something I'd highly advise that you do for your customer and your shop. Okay, It's a proper way to diagnose the car. So now once it's all done, we can see we have a bunch of problems here, a bunch of codes. We're going to hit report. Now, here's all the report, license number, you know, pre-repair. I'm going to hit OK. Now, it's going to say who the technician is. It is me. OK. I'm going to hit OK once again. Save and diagnostic report. And... Notice all your information is there, including your serial number, the time it was done. Gives you all this info, and now it tells you all your codes, all your anti-lock break. Maybe it didn't come in for an anti-lock break type of code, okay? But you did a health check, a health report. You're going to look through everything. So now we go down. It also has uh, a problem with the vision camera, an external memory card. It has a, a body problem, right high beam circuit issue, an instrument cluster, battery voltage low, a park and brake aid missing, communication problem there, and a PCM with the manufacturer P144C. It's a EVAP system purge flow performance during boost. So now that code has to be taken care of. And there's all the stuff that's normal. So now if we want to share, we're going to hit the share button. We're going to hit the Gmail. And we're going to send this report right to me. OK. So I'm going to type in here, GT at ATTS. And you can copy as many people as you'd like. So there we go there. We're going to send it out. And that, that report actually is there. And we also save the report. You can do this whole report here. You can look at system list. That's all the modules with problems. And let's take a look here. So if we went down, and if we look at X431 fix, OK, we hit that button. And it says no access, unfortunately, on this tool, they didn't give me access to that. And if I, I tried to activate before, and there was no one in. But anyway, you get the idea. Even with Code Assist, it's going to go on Google to look at what the issue is. ADOS set up here. So the parking aid, if I go into that module, we should see what goes on there. Let's read full codes. Don't clear them. And retrieve these DTCs.
Okay. So you can see it basically tells you what's here. You got an anti-lock brake problem and a powertrain type of issue as well. So it's a very powerful tool. And even if you went into special functions, see this battery one here? If you did code search, look at this, went right on Google. You see that? And if you had, okay. If there's anything they have there to assist in that code. And of course, this does not have installed the X431. You can get that access when you purchase the tool. So that's some of the stuff you can do there. That's systemless. Special functions. Well, we can go into chassis and you got TPMS monitoring. You can train stuff here. This procedure will enable the TPMS, tire pressure monitoring sensor location, and train. So we're not gonna do that. I wanna get one here where you could kind of see. We'll do body. And there's the camera stuff, key learning, battery system reset. So here's a battery monitoring system reset. Turn the ignition on. It says this procedure resets battery monitoring system. Perform this procedure in the following event. Battery is replaced in the vehicle. The BCM is replaced or reprogrammed. The battery management system reset is required in the vehicle as instructed by the shop ma manual. Do you want to continue? Now, you know, the nice thing here is if you hit that print, okay, it will give you that information right there and print it out to a printer you selected. Now, I'm sure that's real tiny for you there, <laughs> okay? But you could see that it would go through and do that. We're not gonna do that here, but. So there are some of the things that you can do there with restraints and all of the other neat stuff. Electrical. Okay module initialization. Before performing this procedure, please ensure that the following operations are completed. And look, it gives you that information. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but you can see what's going on here. Okay. So very, very powerful on this end. And this tool will also have common functions. So it's a common function. Common function, all these things like bleeding, TPMS reset, keep alive memory. Now, CAM, when do you do this? Well, you do this maybe if you had high fuel trim numbers and you fixed that problem of that P0171. Not that this car had it, but if you're working on a vehicle there. You have battery reset, throttle relearn, immobilizer, cylinder power balance, which is a function here on Ford. And if you went in, it would tell you what to do. You could crank it over and you would get what they call relative compression. Okay. So it has a bunch of neat stuff there. Module programming. Okay, so this box right here is the J2534 and it can do programming right from this box. Okay, so this is another great function. Let me plug it back in the vehicle. Put the power button back on. And notice it said, do we want to reconnect? Because I disconnected. So now it's going back to reconnect to the module. And this is a very capable uh, scan tool because it can do a lot of different things here. So program module installation, these are all the different modules that may be programmable. Okay. And by the way, this tool is also capable, if you're working on 2017 and later, Stellantis, that means Chrysler, Jeep, all of those, Ram, those vehicles, you could register this, register this tool so you can get past the gateway module at auto auth, A-U-T-O-A-U-T-H.com, okay? 
There is a fee for that, but that's no matter whose tool. And any scan tool that goes on the internet, you can register as well along with your, your, uh, your people you work with. And then here's ADOS stuff here. So it has ADOS and they sell a whole ADOS system as well, okay? So that is a good feature and let's look at the diagnostic plan now. So diagnostic plan, you got three major DTCs and if you go into one of them, okay, it has a miscommunication with the restraint, memory loss may be a battery thing and invalid data there. The nice thing too, if you come across something that doesn't work, you can do a report right away and send it in directly to launch. So a very capable system here. This is the launch throttle three scan tool. Next we'll go into the scope module. Let me slide over now and I'm gonna go into oscilloscope. Now notice they got three different scope boxes. This is the latest one that we have right here. And this scope box right here, we're gonna select it, and we're gonna show you a couple of things about this scope box. One, you can see up on the screen, we have the first channel up, and the first channel being up here, I could go up or down with the voltage. You see how they got bigger? The smaller you go, got way bigger. Now it's like off the screen. Or I could go down. The other thing I want you to be aware of, we're on primary ignition here. If we were on secondary ignition, we would want to go in and use an attenuator. This is a 20 to 1. So if you go back to the screen, you're going to see 1x, that's normal leads. 10x, 20x, you always look at your attenuator, and this is 20 to 1. So if I, I hit that, that would save my scope from any issue, and this would connect right here onto the scope. Since I'm on primary ignition, I don't have to worry about that. So let's explain to you what we have here up on the screen. We have the primary ignition, from here to here is dwell, the amount of time that the coil is actually saturating. This is the firing line, okay? So that's your KVs that are actually firing and putting out, and it says here on this thing, we're roughly about 17,000. This is our spark line, okay? A spark line right there should have a decent slope, and there's our coil oscillations. Now, if you want to zoom in, there's a zoom button up top, and that makes it a little bit better to actually look at that. You see what I did here? I was able to zoom in right to that part right there to see the coil oscillations, or go back over here. So it's pretty neat, and I could unzoom just by hitting the blue button, and I'm back to normal. Okay. I could also, as scope moving up and down, please look at the yellow box. Notice I'm at zero. Well, I was at zero volts there for a second. And you see how I'm moving that up and down? So we can see our voltage level. If we want to put curses on, I could basically put curses on and get my math measurements here of my high voltage in KVs. It will give me that right there. And then I could put my other cursor, and then I can grab the second one here if I wanted to measure from here to here or here to there, I could, I can get all that information. I could also do curses this way in time frame. And I could see what the dwell time actually is right there. 
So it would tell us in milliseconds like 4.006 milliseconds. And we could turn everything off by hitting the cursor buttons and we could add another channel. Now, this other channel is basically a signal that you can see is some sort of square wave, but it's not giving us the good resolution. So we could take our time base and basically now you see I'm starting to get another box or so. Let me make it five milliseconds. And now you see a square wave from the crank signal. And we could move at any time, we could move the signal over. Okay, you see how I did that? My finger is just on the screen, and all I'm doing is moving it to where I would like. I'm going to go right here for now to about the third box line. Okay, now I'm going to put channel three on. Now, channel three, you go, hmm, I see a flat line then going up. So what do I need to do here? I need to tighten the time up a little more. There's the cam signal. So now I have yellow ignition, blue crank, and purple is basically my cam. So I have cam and crank sync there. I'm going to put on channel four, and now I have fuel. But it's right on the yellow. So what I can do is move the green Move the yellow down, move the green up a hair, and now you got all four channels on. And if we want to turn something off, all I got to do is turn channel one off, it's gone. Channel two off, it's gone. Channel three off, and it's gone, and I'm just looking at the injector. I could move that injector all the way over. I could take that time and make it bigger by dropping it. And if I don't see it on the screen, okay, see what I'm doing here? All I gotta do is move my finger, okay? And if we keep blowing that up, we're gonna see it in higher resolution for your eye. And at any time, again, we could play the zoom game. I wanna see if there's a problem right there. I could blow it up, okay? If I wanna go here, I could blow that up. And if I take the time and go back to two milliseconds, get out of zoom, I can bring it down. I can go tighter with it, go 10 milliseconds. Now hit zoom. And you can see if you have any problems, is that going down the ground? Are we going up at least and this is important. So if we take our curses and we want to know from ground to the peak, we are at 64.8 volts. And that's important. Anything under 35 volts, we would have a problem. Could be a voltage drop, poor connection, power, or ground, right? VD is never a good thing. And we could also do the time of the injector on. And that's when the computer in this particular setup is actually pulling it to ground. So here is going to be my on time. And that tells me I am at 1.158, or excuse me, 2.168 milliseconds of on time. Okay. So now, you know, when you have that all set, you go, oh, but I wanted to look at my other stuff. Not a problem. We hit channel one, we got channel one back on, we got channel two back on, and we got channel three back on. But notice our one channel here, we are not seeing that ignition. So what do I do? I just move it over. It is a very easy, capable scope to use without a lot of learning curve, okay? I put this on about an hour ago to just make sure everything worked, that it charged battery up, all that. And it is super easy. You got a big help button right here. So if you wanna know about probe compensation, 
There's a whole manual on it, one to one, 10 to one. You want to close that and look at something else. You can go back. We're, we're in help. We can look at how to connect. If you don't know how to connect, you can go and do trigger settings. Everything is in here to show you what you need to do. There's math channels, how to put the math channels on. And I'll show you that real quick. So if we go here, now you got math channels on. You see the stuff in the background? You can do reference, put a reference on or off. So if you had, as a reference, you see how that pulled it up? And now you can change the different levels here of triggers and just turn everything off. And the other nice thing here is you could change the sampling rate. Let's take the blue. So if I'm at full, I want you to look at the signal. You see what happened to the blue? It got all these weird noise going on. Well, that's for high speed stuff. You have high bypass. Now look at it, it looks totally crazy. And then you got low pass is how you're gonna wanna look at it. So when you go into some of these functions that they have, you can do measure, all these things you see here, period, frequency, and so on. You could save different waveforms. You could display, use a setup. So you can see I put one in there, ignition, crank, cam, injector, and you can see that this is a very capable bandwidth, okay? Very fast scope, and it's all encompassed in here. You have a complete menu here, okay? You have the help menu, you got the math channels, and again, it's as easy as clicking a button when you don't want something on or off. We wanna take cursors off, they're all off. So this particular scope, you could do a quick save on the bottom. I just saved that particular file. If you're getting a lot of interference on channel one, okay, you could try to clear it up. And you see how that cleared right up? So this is the new launch lab scope with many, many functions that I'm still going to show you a couple of more right here. You know, the other thing here, there's an auto button, but when you're doing more than one channel, look what happens on the screen when I hit auto. Well, it's all over the place, right? And a nice thing here, when I hit auto, I could hit circuits. So let me show you this menu. You could do 12 volt, 24 volt, AC ripple, Ford smart alternator, cranking current, Okay, you could go to sensors. You want a crank sensor? We hit the crank sensor, okay. But notice this stuff will not work, will not work when you're doing multiple channels. This is why you need to understand how a scope works. It's very easy. You see the mush mosh that's on that screen. We're gonna look at actuators. Take a look at the actuator list. That is pretty deep right there. You have an ignition list, primary, secondary, primary and secondary, networks. So look at this, you could do CAN high and low, CAN high, six, 14 low, LIN, flex ray and K line. And it sets up everything for you as far as the speed. That's why before when I showed you, hey, it looked kind of lousy, it was all fuzzy. And we had to adjust it because the scope is very, very fast. And then you got a combination. You could do crank and cam. And let's see if we hit that, if we get anything, okay. So look at that. It did pull up two signals and we could put the other channel on. Now notice it does look a bit different. What do we need to do here? Well, don't worry. 
here's what we need to do. We're gonna need to lift the voltage on the first one, and we're gonna do that by hitting the little button there. Green channel, we need to get that voltage back up. And by the way, you should be hitting, I keep hitting the channel button there, but all we gotta do is hit this button here and put that to 10 volts. And then if we go here on channel three, notice that went to ignition. You see we're on a 5K probe? I'm gonna go back to a 1K probe, okay? And I'm gonna change that voltage to three volts. Or five volts. So look at that. And by the way, when your screen looks crazy like this, it's like, whoa, what's all that stuff in the background? Okay. Well, you know, this is stuff that goes on there unless you set up your scope the way you want it. Okay. So look, you can go to all your channels right here. You can move channels around. You can go in the background. All right, so when you have the display all messed up, if you hit this common or graticule, you could take the grid off, so now it's not as confusing. Look at the difference. See all the background stuff? You can frame stuff, you can take it off. I would say I like it just with the dots, not with all that grid. It's too busy for me, okay? When we're done, we just hit the screen. And now you don't have all that on here. You want to shut off these other things you have going on here. And now you're back. We got to turn the cursors off as well. So now you're just back to a regular scope setup here, right? And we can move anything around we want. I put the blue up top. I put that, so that's a crank. There's the cam. Here's our ignition, but remember we had ignition at the bottom. And then we could basically hit run. And there's your scope. And if you want to make the blue bigger, not a problem. Go, go down again with the, the function here. It's on 5 volt. We can make that down to 2 volt. Bring that down a little bit. And we have a good signal. Again, here, you just go down with that voltage, not up. And now you got the red going in. Put the blue up top. Bring the red down. Bring the blue down a little more. And now you have everything. You want to open it up to make it a little wider. Well, then you just drop the time, okay? And see what happens when I drop the time? And then if I move the screen across, because now I don't see, I don't see the injector, do I? Well, there it is. And if I just go up a little bit more in the time to 10 milliseconds, there we go. And one more time, watch how easy Watch how easy this is. I'm going to hit the auto button. So let's go back to the screen. Okay. And if I hit auto, we can go into the sensors and all that, right? And if I hit auto, well, look at the junk you got. And it ruined your whole screen, right? Well, not a problem. What do you know here? You're going to have to get your your time we want to get that uh, we want to get that voltage setting up so there's 10 volts there let's play with the time we're at 50 nanoseconds so we don't want that that's way too quick and look how nasty this stuff looks right I'm gonna bring the yellow to the bottom the blue up top okay and it's all fuzzy so what do we do we go into the channel we're going to hit low bypass. We're now going to see our yellow starting to look good. We're going to do that right on the blue as well. The blue, we're going to go into low bypass. We're going to bring the blue down.
we're going to put on the other channels here, channel three, and we're going to go into that low bypass, 1X. Okay, that one automatically comes up with a higher voltage for ignition. And then we're going to go here and we have our injector on. We could separate the yellow out. We could trigger off channel one, going on the falling edge, okay? And we now can go maybe five milliseconds, slide it over a little more. And we can just about see our whole setup on the scope. It's that easy. And we could, again, move the, the red up here so we can see can crank up top, blue. We can move the ignition to the bottom, move the green there, and have all our stuff set up on this launch tool. You don't like the way the display looks, okay? You can change that display in the background by hitting, okay, by hitting the channel here and then going in and hit display and display, hit the graticule and then hit grid and now you're back to a decent looking screen. Okay. And notice if you're bouncing around, you got to hit trigger and you're going to have to trigger off one channel and we're going to hit falling. So when it walks around, we could adjust our trigger level. Notice it's not walking now. And that's what that level button right here is. See that going up and down? Because I'm triggering off channel one. And that will stabilize your reading. And there you have a really good setup. So this has been a review of the Launch Throttle 3 Lab Scope. And remember, there's much more that this tool can do. There are other add-on features. Please check with your launch representative. I'm G. Trulia for ATTS and TST. Thank you and good night.